All right. Well, thanks for joining us today. Um, we have our farm school information session for next year for 2024. Um, here at the Center for Arkansas Farms and Food. And right now we do have our farm school applications are open um, through the month of August. So if anybody's watching this and they decide after the program that they really um, want to go ahead and apply, uh, please do it for um, August 30th. And then um, I'll also share that we do have um, an open house. I believe that's, uh, I should have looked at the day before. Um, sometime in August. Um, does anybody else re recall the the date? Brooke, you're on mute. I'm looking it up right now. Okay. All right. We can we can share that information at the at the end. Um, but anyway, my name is Heather Frederick, and I am the uh, assistant director for the Center for Arkansas Farms and Food. And we also have with us our farm school team today. Um, I'll let you all introduce yourselves. Brooke, how about you go first? So my name is Brooke Anderson. I'm the business instructor for the Center for Arkansas Farms and Food. So I, um, a lot of my time is spent at the farm school, but I also get to help out with some of the apprenticeship beginning farmer classes on the financial side and, and help with some of our networking events that we throw here at CAF as well. Great, thanks. Brooke, Jonathan? Yeah, my name is Jonathan MacArthur, and I am the farm manager and field educator for the Center for Arkansas Farms and Food. And Joe. Hi, I'm Joe Hannon. I am the production class instructor for the CAF Farm School. Great. And I just wanted to check in on the audio. Can everybody hear everybody okay? It's a little soft on my end, which I don't quite understand why, but... Um, might be just some speaker issues on my end, but as long as, how about you, Chase? You're the, <laughs> all right, great. We'll, we'll continue on then. All right, so, sorry, the um, slide is a little slow advancing. Usually the first one is a little bit slow for some reason, and I don't know why. I did find that open house date. Okay, great. August I'll share that. When is it? August 29th. August 29th. Okay, great. Um, yes. So if anybody wants to come to the farm, see, you know, what the facilities are like, see what the farm is like, um, meet the instructors in person, and maybe even meet one of our current farm school students, um, that's the um, really the best time to, to come and do that. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and get started now that the slides are moving. Um, so just to kind of like, we wanted to give you, um, before we dig into the farm school side of things, we wanted to give you an overview of the Center for Arkansas Farms and Food um, in a more um, organizational capacity. And so our goals at CAF are to expand and strengthen the food system, our Northwest Arkansas food system and Arkansas food system. Um, and our, you know, there's a lot of pieces to the food system, um, but we see our role in that is um, really training, um, look, uh, training farmers. Um, you know, so we are, our kind of big metrics are to increase the farms that are in Arkansas, increase the produce go grown, and also in, um, strengthen the agricultural networks. Um, within our communities because, you know, that's, um, the, the, those social networks are, are really important to long-term success, we feel. And so we do this by creating educational programs and strengthening agricultural networks that provide skills, experiences, and resources to, to support farmers all the way from production and est startup establishment through business and marketing. And so we have a couple of different programs um, that we work through. Um, we've got um, our, our kind of our um, foundational programs are our farm school and our on-farm apprenticeship program. And so both of these programs provide experiential learning opportunities. Um, the farm school, um, all of that education takes place out at our research farm. Um, we've got, um, which, you know, we'll go in depth with today. Um, and with our on-farm apprenticeship program, that is, um, we partner with um, experienced uh, established farms in the area, 
um, all the way from Northwest Arkansas, Arkansas to Central Arkansas. Uh, and that provides a really great experience of what a commercial farm experience looks like. Um, you know, people often uh, mix the two up or often have questions about what is the difference between, between those. Um, farm school is really, really focused on student education. Um, we spend a lot of time, as you'll see throughout this, um, training, providing education, providing experiences, um, uh, increasing confidence um, with that student. And it's, you know, somewhat in a um, protected environment because um, our main crop, we do grow a lot of crops, but our main product is students. And so we want to give them the foundation to um, go out and be able to manage a farm, run a farm, operate their own farm. Um, and on the apprenticeship side of things, um, you know, the, uh, appre they're, they're paid apprentices working alongside um, a farm uh, with a farm mentor. However, um, you know, that farmer has a lot of um, responsibilities for running their farm. You know, the apprenticeship is designed to fill a labor need, um, but also give real life experiences to that apprentice. Um, but the apprentices are not going to get the type of education um, that they that they the, the in-depth education um, as they do in the farm school. And so, you know, really we see these two programs working side by side. You know, farm school is a really great place to get um, the nuts and bolts of how, how to have, um, you know, a, a viable farm. And the on-farm apprenticeship program, you know, it's a great opportunity to see what those pieces look like in action alongside a successful farm. So, you know, we encourage everybody that comes to the farm school to actually go out um, and get some experience working alongside a farmer. So that's kind of the intent behind how those programs were developed. Um, our other programs, uh, we also work very closely with our um, county extension offices and especially in, in Washington County, um, doing various outreach and workshop uh, programs. And uh, we have a lot of uh, networking events as well um, that, you know, sometimes they're informal, sometimes they're formal events. We have a quarterly beers with farmers. Um, and then we also have some more formalized kind of educational slash networking events as well. Um, that, and we have one coming up uh, in October, I believe, right? Well, right. and we have a Beers with Farmers actually next Tuesday. That's so right. that's one of our less formal ones. It's a great place to just come and meet local farmers and chat. Our topic for this month for August is um, connecting with your community resources. So we have a couple of community groups, um, Arkansas Women in Ag and the Indigenous Food and Agriculture Initiative. A couple of people from that initiative are coming. So feel free to join us. We'll be at Ozark Beer Co. in Rogers, August 1st, 530 to 730. Nice. Great. Thank you. We have a lot of partnerships, um, you know, working in this kind of food systems development. You know, there's so many different pieces to the food system. Um, and so just by the nature of the work, it requires um, a lot of partnerships working at different levels. Um, and so, you know, these are just kind of our core partners, um, although there's other organizations that we work with. So th these core partners, um, we are located at the U University of Arkansas. Um, there's kind of in, in the Division of Agriculture, which there's the um, Cooperative Extension Office is under there and the Ag Research Station. Um, and so that's who that's where we are um, situated in. But we're partners with the University of Arkansas campus, um, the National Ag Law Center, um, uh, National Center for Appropriate Technology. Um, some uh, they're very well known in the farming community for their action program. Um, Spring Creek Food Hub is a new local food hub that's working to aggregate uh, produce from a variety of small farms in the area. Um, Northwest Arkansas Farm Link, and um, that's a program with uh, the Land Trust, and they also have. Um, a variety of other uh, programs that kind of fit in the access to land and, and uh, increasing the affordability of farmland in Northwest Arkansas. Um, and then there's also um, the Arkansas Food Innovation Center, which they do value added processing. And um, uh, also um, super important, probably one of the most important is our local farmers. Um, we have really close relationships with um, a lot of farmers in the area. We do farm tours, we bring farmers in to, to speak to our classes. Um, and, and we, you know, want to have them as well in, involved um, as much as possible, where possible. 
Okay, so the farm school, the location. Um, so this here picture is the Arkansas Agriculture um, uh, Research and Extension Center. So we just call it the experiment station or the farm if you're local um, here in Fayetteville. Um, and it's the, the whole facility is around, I think 400 acres or something like that. Um, and that blue um, uh, outline on the upper edge is where the calf farm facilities are located. Um, and so we have about 10 acres or so under our management out there. Um, and so that's just kind of to give you a visual on, um, oh, here's an up closer picture of what that looks like. Um, we've got some high tunnels, we've got um, some old kind of um, apple orchards that, that are not strongly managed but um, are part of the the area anyway we have you know it looks very 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 different from <laughs> this this picture right here um because it's all you know has crops in it there's no bare land um at this point so but this is uh, a snapshot of, of where our the farm is located and i think that's just uh for reference point is is pointing out the food science department and then we also have um a greenhouse and classroom that's located out there uh, near the food science department as well. So getting into some of the details about the farm school. Um, so we don't exactly have the calendar nailed down yet, but it's looking like it's going to be um, starting in early February, early to mid February, um, and then it'll end up mid November. Um, in the past, we have started in January, but the weather's always crappy that time of year. So um, we're thinking hard about moving the start date into February. It, um, so the program itself, it's classroom plus experiential learning. It's uh, 16 hours a week. Um, and, and it's also important to know that there is periodic um, outside of classroom time that's needed for various projects. And this is, you know, all those, um, all that work really benefits, helps the students take as much away from the program as possible. Um, the the time split at the program is about 50% of it is in the field and about 50% is spent in the classroom with um, Brooke on business and financial issues and Joe um, during the doing doing the production classroom teaching. Um, the program itself, it's Monday through Thursday, 830 to 1230. Um, you know, there's optional Friday study hall. Um, if you uh, you know, ever need time in a quiet space to work um, work on some of those assignments. Um, we do group lunches on a monthly basis. And and also there are some holidays and a spring break included and a fall break included in our in our calendar. Brooke, you want to take take this one? Sure, I can definitely do that. So our farm school program um, is divided into four different quarters. So the goal of that is to help you kind of break up your learning into um, some expectations and you can hit some specific goals every quarter as we work through. Um, the other nice thing about the farm school program and how we have it structured is that you get multiple instructors. So um, we're all experts in our area. So I do business, Joe's production, um, Jonathan's field. And so we get to cover all of these, the whole farm management, um, from a holistic picture and you get experts from each one of those topics. Um, we also have a legal team that comes in from the National Ag Law Center um, and they are great at bringing in their, their legal expertise um, from, um, from their perspective, from an educational perspective. So um, that's pretty great that we can basically do the whole farm planning um, versus just having to go and do the research for each one individually on your own. So that's um, the structure of the farm school program. All right, I have another lag <laughs> in slides. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do this one too? I can keep going. Absolutely. All right. So, um, we do want to talk a little bit about grading structure. 
um, because while this is a pass fail program and we believe that you guys are all going to be adults, you're coming into this to learn as much as you can in order to create um, a solid career path for yourself in the agriculture industry. Um, we do want you guys to be able to know what is expected of you and um, what you can expect from us as well as instructors that are um, kind of helping you coach, coach you through this next step of your education. Um, so we do um, provide points to help you understand where you're at with like, are you gonna be able to get the certificate of completion at the end of the program? Um, we focus heavily on attendance and participation because this is very much an experiential learning program. So the best way for you to get out what you want out of this is for you to show up, be here, ask questions. Um, we have a lot of discussion-based and activity-based um, learning environments. So we do um, provide points on those two. Quarterly assessments, basically that's um, where each one of the topics that Joe, Jonathan, and I cover You'll have um, like a homework assignment kind of, but a lot of times we'll do that in class and it's just to help you um, practically apply the concepts that we're learning in class. So an example would be like writing a business plan overview in my business course so that you not only hear about the concepts, but you're actually doing it. And so that you have something to take away whenever you finish the farm school program. So what you ultimately end up with is a whole farm plan. So you'll get the crop plan side from Joe and you'll get the business plan side from me. And um, you'll walk away with an individualized um, whole farm plan, um, as well as the skills that you learned from Jonathan in the field. Um, once you finished the program. I can keep going on this one too. Sure. What we've also recognized in teaching this for a few years now is that while we are all experts in our field, sometimes there's areas in which we overlap or we need to kind of take a 3000 level view and do like a big picture look at what does it take to manage a farm? What does it take to work on a farm? And so some of those topics are like understanding your local food system. So we specifically are located in the Northwest Arkansas area and we've got a lot of partners that we work with. So we try and give you guys a good picture of that and um, connect you with those resources early on so that you can be more successful as a farmer as you graduate. And um, we also talk about spreadsheet basics because we've got to have some technology involved with how we um, learn some of the financial and crop planning topics. And then um, one of our more fun classes is the, the student-led farm stand. So you can actually find us at Agri Park every Wednesday, 11 to one right now, if you want to drop by and see, but um, our students are managing um, the farm stand and able to sell the produce that they've been helping grow at the calf farm, um, which is pretty, pretty exciting. Um, and they're also managing or getting mentored in their own seasonal group plot. So um, we've got two groups of students that are figuring out how to manage their own harvest, manage their own crop planning, and they do so um, with the mentorship of our field team. And then that produce is then sold at the farm stand. So you can kind of see where it's full circle. It brings in all of the lessons you're learning in the farm, and then you're able to apply that with some pretty neat activities as a group. And then my section, um, I focus more on bus business curriculum um, outside of that Farm Foundation's holistic look. I um, help students develop their own business plan. I work um, closely with them one-on-one. -on -one. We do some one-on-one -on -one business plan tutoring, basically. Um, we also focus in on doing workshops so that you're learning how to do it in class. Um, I try to keep it as experiential and as fun as possible in a classroom setting. Um, there is a little bit of work that you have to do on your end, of course, of researching what the market looks like and um, thinking about your individual goals as a farmer or as a farm manager. Um, but we together will look over a curriculum from um, farm operations and recognizing your risk and understanding the legal um, outputs um, and then management and distribution. So how do you hire labor? What does that look like? How many people do you need? 
um, marketing? Where am I selling my product? Who are my customers? Um, how do I make sure I'm communicating that I'm the best farmer out there for you to come buy from me? And then lastly, and probably one of the more important pieces is the financials, which is, can I make a living? Can I make a profit with the farm model, the farm business model that I'm setting up? throughout this class. So it's pretty exciting to see the students go from having a big dream in January and then actually finalizing the details in November. They work all year long to drafting and redrafting, rethinking it. And then by the end, they're walking away with a business plan document that they can provide to a lender if they're looking to go ahead and get that startup capital and start their, their farm ownership um, path, or if not, they've got the skill set of business management that they're ready to take into their next farm management role. Um, it's pretty exciting to see the development of that. Um, so that's mostly what we do with that business curriculum side of things. Um, I'll let, I think it's Joe next, talk about production and kind of, we overlap a little bit, but um, with crop planning and financials, but I'll let him take that next slide. Actually, it's um, legal. Oh, it's legal. Which, How could I forget legal? This is where everyone has all their questions. <laughs> um, so the Rumleys from the National Ag Law Center, they come in and talk about um, how to set up your business structure. Um, if you're leasing land, um, how to set up that lease agreement in a way that's equitable for you and the landowner. Um, and then, of course, if things like if you're hiring labor, what does that look like from a labor law perspective? And how do you get organic certified or how to use your pesticides in a in a safe manner legally? Um, so you get some expertise that's hard to come by. Um, lawyers are pretty expensive, but we're pretty um, lucky to have some experts come in and provide that education for y'all. And you'll um, integrate all of that legal curriculum that you learn into your business plan so that you know you're set from that perspective. Now it's Joe's turn. Hey, now it's my turn. <laughs> so think of uh, the production curriculum is both the science behind farming, but also building out your practical plan, what you're going to do when you farm um, after farm school. So all of that was within a framework of sustainable, regenerative, and organic agriculture. We take a broad look at production practices, things that are being used around around the country, and and have good discussions about you know how to farm when um, or what you do within class. You know we start from a perspective of how do we find and evaluate farmland to see if it's even worth farming on or should we buy that piece of land? Um, from there, we go on to building out a farm map. Where are our fields going to be? Where are our high tunnels and our pack shed and equipment storage? Um, how are we going to bring power and water on site? So we do um, one of your assessments is kind of building out that map of your, your ideal or dream farm. Um, from there, we go into building out a crop plan. So the crop plan is what are you planting? Where are you planting it? And then once those decisions are made, those financials tie back to production class as you're building out your business plan. Um, you'll build out a fertility plan. You'll build out um, an irrigation plan, a pest management plan. You'll identify the tools and equipment that you need to farm those crops that you chose in your crop plan. So everything is really tied and knitted together very nicely. And and then all kind of feeds into, again, the, the building out that business plan. Um, we also work fairly closely with the field team as we get into things like pest management. You know, we're talking about the pests in the class. We're talking about how to scout them and make decisions on scouting. Um, but then you actually go out to the field and you do the scouting and, and um, you know, so everything is just kind of tied together there. So that's, that's kind of a production class in a nutshell. Great. Jonathan, I think the next couple slides are on field and the farm. If you want to take over for a few. Yeah, absolutely. So in the field, we really try to bring in the things that Joe's teaching in the classroom um, while also giving you a broad spectrum of experience with multiple scales, um, with multiple different tools, we have quite an assortment of practices that we use and, you know, 
know, various different shade cloths and low tunnels and high tunnels and things like that. So that whether you're coming in with experience from a farm or from some training programs you've been in before, or you're coming in with zero experience, by the time you leave our program, you'll have had hands-on, um, you know, realistic experiences with all these different tools you may have seen on social media or um you know have had heard about but never got the chance to use so we do have those um, luxuries here um, which is really nice we really like students getting to see you know the market garden scale so that's represented for us by about an acre or just over an acre of you know small scale um, intensive market garden um, with the addition of growing blackberries and blueberries, because those are things that we can do successfully here in our region. Um, but we also want to demonstrate more of like a mid-scale farm. So a lot more tractor work, um, growing, you know, one crop in one area during a year um, and talking about how to manage that um, so that you can actually make profit on um, some of those large scale crops. And we really see that as a good way to diversify um, some of those sales channels for smaller scale growers so that they have some um, potential for growing and selling in a more wholesale market. Like I said, we do have um, a really nice greenhouse. So the classroom is actually held in the head house of that greenhouse area. Um, but you get the experience doing a good amount of transplant production. Um, and then we also have a few um, couple high tunnels that we work in. Um, and then, like I said, some low tunnels with, you know, using, utilizing as much as we can, shade cloth, um, row cover, and various other things. Um, and like I said, we do have some perennial fruit. We talk a lot about fruit tree care throughout the year, um, but it's not necessarily something we recommend for everybody to go on um, and and farm for profit in this area, just because we have some um, we have some unique risks and challenges with some of our perennial tree fruit. But it's really great that we bring in experts that show us, you know, different pruning practices, different fruit tree care practices. And if you really want to do it in this area, we have a couple of experts that will talk you kind of through that. Um, and like I said, we do have a wide assortment of equipment and tools. And one of the newer things that we started this year, which we're definitely going to continue for the foreseeable future, is a give or take 20 week team based group plot. And so uh, this year we have nine students, and those are separated into two groups one of five, one of four. And then um, I mentor one, and then one of our AmeriCorps VISTA members, she mentors another one. And that is essentially just you have a really small crop plan that you work on as a team. Um, you get your beds ready. You grow a succession or two um, for your market stand. And then you put the farm to kind of bed um, after market stand closes up. So you get to see kind of a encapsulated um, small field management. So you get to be a farm manager for a couple of weeks. You get to be a market manager for a couple of weeks and a worker for a couple of weeks. Um, and that kind of rotates throughout this 20 week session uh, so that everybody gets a good amount of experience and what it's like to determine what your labor needs are, uh, determine what tools and equipment you need for these days. So it gives a lot more hands on experience. And what our hopes is that it really lends to giving a, you know, um, a realistic perspective on things like crop planning and things like that, that can seem so daunting, but when you buy it off smaller pieces at a time, um, it, it really helps that understanding when you go to start really building out your complex crop plan with Joe. So yeah, you can go to the next slide. Um, with the field experience, we do try to give you a broad spectrum. Like we said earlier, this is, you know, um, a 10 to 11 month training program. So you get to see as much of a season as we possibly can show you. Um, and you get to see that full year from starting everything in the early, late winter, early spring, um, all the way to, like I said, putting the farm to bed and planting garlic at the end of the year, things like that. Um, we try to keep it pretty varied uh, throughout the year. That's one of the things I really like about diversified farms is it's not planting and harvesting the same thing over and over and over all year long. We really have a good um, spectrum of work um, and that really keeps it exciting, uh, but also means there's a lot to learn. 
And so there's it can um, it can seem like a lot, especially this time of the year uh, when it's hot and we're still out. We still need to be out in the field. Um, but that hands on experience is pretty critical. So we do really like to, you know, give you a good broad spectrum of tractors, tools and techniques. Um, and that's really Joe and I really overlap a lot there with him showing you in the classroom and talking about these different things uh, to us showing you here on the farm. And we're also really lucky that we have not just our equipment, but we have, you know, a whole research farm worth of equipment. So whether you get to, you know, see and use or get to use all those things, you, you will get to see and talk about a lot of them. Um, but there should be a good amount of time on the tractor um, and with a lot of our other tools. Um, we really like that process of seeing students grow everything, harvest everything, get as much opportunities to sell some of that produce. Um, and then while we still incorporate, you know, some of our sustainability practices through, you know, cover cropping everything for the winter um, and, you know, taking this whole perspective and just trying to give you as much experience as we can in a year. Um, you are a pretty integral part of this farm. You know, we have a fairly large amount of space that we grow in and a fairly small crew. Um, so the students are really, uh, we really count on the students to be there and be an integral part of our farm because uh, we feel like that's the best way to help you all learn. So that's about all I have for the field. All right, student outcomes. Um, so, after, you know, by the time the students uh, finish the program, you know, there's, um, they gain a, a whole variety of knowledge and skills. Um, but really, when it comes down to, to the outcomes, they um, gain understanding principles and practices of specialty crop farming um, through the variety of, of skills that they learn, the knowledge that they learn in the classroom. Um, they gain confidence, um, which is probably one of the most important things. Um, that, that our students walk away with um, because as they come in, they've got, you know, a, a lot of ideas uh, about what they want to do, but they don't know how to get there. And, you know, throughout the course of the program, they hone those ideas in um, and, and, you know, through opportun various opportunities on the farm, they really um, are able to gain confidence in their abilities, which is super important um, for, for um, starting. They increase familiar, familiarity with uh, legal risks surrounding farm, uh, surrounding farm businesses. Um, they create the crop plan, they create the business plan and financials. Um, and then we also, you know, uh, want to um, expose uh, our, our students to as many ag resources and employment opportunities in the area as possible. We have a lot of guest speakers. Um, that come into the classroom. We go to a lot of farms. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, opportunities um, and resources that uh, they can be connected to. Um, and then they also gain experience in farm management and sales through um, the additions of our farm stand and the group plot management. The tuition, um, getting into some of the, the, you know, some of the nitty gritty details of the program. The tuition is $2,500. Um, and the value of that though, um, it is, it's a very deeply discounted price. Um, comparable programs around the country are more than twice that much. And so um, it is important to us that we keep it affordable um, and keep it accessible. Um, we do have a payment plan that's available so that um, uh, tuition can be spread out over the first three months of um, the program. We do have some needs-based opportunities, um, needs-based scholarships. Um, there's our internal CAF um, farm-funded scholarship. Um, if you've done an AmeriCorps um, uh, service year, um, we have not. We we believe we are eligible to receive that education award. Um, Previous discussions with AmeriCorps um, administration um, say that we can, but we have not actually gone through that process. Um, but we are more than happy to, um, you know, look at those types of opportunities if they come up. Um, last year, we also received um, a Homegrown by Heroes, uh, which is um, uh, administered through the Department of Arkansas Department of Agriculture, and that was for a veteran farmer. 
Um, I'm still waiting to hear back if we'll get that opportunity again, but we use that with one of our students this year. So there are some um, uh, scholarship opportunities out there. Those, the links to our, um, we do have a, a page on our website with um, scholarship information. So please take a look at that if, if you're interested in those. We do have um, several policies um, uh, with our program and, and some of those are reflected because we are um, under the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture. Um, and so we have to follow all of their policies as well. Uh, but for our program, um, we have a photo, a photo media release form. Um, you can opt out of being any kind of social media, but we really depend on social media um, stories, uh, photos to really kind of sh share, um, tell people what we are all about. Um, one of our main uh, major policies, which Brooke alluded to earlier, is our attendance and participation policies. Um, you know, we don't want you to come uh, to class sick, um, uh, but we do want you to make a, a concerted effort to um, come to class, be on time, be ready to participate. Um, uh, also, um, tying back into that grading metrics, that grading rubric um, is complete, completing the assessments. Um, all of those assessments are designed to support your farm planning. And so those are really important for you to complete. Um, we have um, a physician's health form um, that needs to be finished uh, or needs to be completed out by, by your physician. Um, it's just basically a physical form saying that you're in good health and you're able to do um, you know, farm work because you know farms, there's a lot of lifting, um, squatting, standing, being out in the sun, exposed to ticks and chiggers. And so um, it's not for the faint of heart. And so we want to make sure that everybody's in good physical uh, form for that. Um, and also uh, another safety measure, um, you have to wear closed toe shoes uh, in the field. Um, that's you know, uh, just an important safety safety uh, measure um, from the university. Um, technology, we're trying to do a better job of like honing in what technology what, that we are using in our program. Um, uh, so as far as like programs go, um, just having a Google, Google account for um, using the Google suite of programs um, is, is a requirement. We use the Slack app for, you know, day-to-day -day communications. Um, and then um, uh, there's several class activities that require a laptop um, and or a smartphone. So um, those are highly recommended. And so we, um, you know, just to kind of uh, in, in the, um, in the uh, approach of being clear as possible, you know, that we do have expectations of people that come to the program. Um, you know, students are an integral part of running CAF. Um, and so, you know, again, uh, ex we expect that you're going to show up and participate and um, do the work. Um, and a part of doing the work is, you know, being able to do physical activity, um, step over, you know, uh, being able to walk on, un, you know, um, I'm, I'm thinking about being able to walk through a field. You know, the ground is n not always level, there's clods of dirt, you know, so. Um, being able to, you know, respond to the situation in a physical manner. Um, I touched on the participation and attendance, um, respecting others, you know, having a positive, a positive attitude. Those are, you know, uh, go, they go without saying, but, you know, we have to say them because it's kind of, you know, some of the basic tenets of, of our, our classroom. Um, we do ask that you provide feedback and evaluation of the program. It just helps us to um, review the program, identify how we can improve the program. We take those very seriously. And so, you know, it helps if you have honest responses to those. Um, experience in Google Docs and Sheets, um, it's highly recommended. Um, it helps out a lot, although we have had people that, you know, have very minimal experience. So we um, are, are willing to help you gain that experience, but it does help if you have that background. Um, and one last important thing to note is farm school students are not part of the University of Arkansas. Um, 
And so, you know, there's not access um, to the library or the hyper or um, this uh, student health center. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's um, one important important note. We don't give college credit for this program. Um, on the other hand, you're not paying the um, college uh, University of Arkansas tuition rate either. So um, the flip side of that. Um, looking at what's next as far as timeline goes. So applications are open. Um, we're accepting those until um, August 30th. Um, a scholarship applications are open until then as well. We really don't even look at those until after um, they're, you know, that deadline closes. And so um, after they close, we'll uh, review them. We'll set up interviews um, for um, personal interviews uh, that are held on online over either Zoom or Teams. Um, and we have a series of questions that we ask everybody. Um, we have a, a CAF farm working interview as well that um, is on the 9th of September. Um, and that's just to give you um, a little feel for working at the farm, a uh, feel for working with uh, in a group, um, a feel for the instructors, um, you know, testing, seeing, you know, what personalities are like, um, that sort of thing. Um, there's a, a, a worksheet sample, um, and that's uh, due on September 15th. And that's just to really see where you're at as far as uh, technology goes. Um, it helps us to, to, to prepare, plan ahead, um, uh, and, and figure out how much, you know, assistance is needed and where. Um, sorry about that. Um, and then by October 4th, we will send an invitation out through email um, to, you know, those that we would like to invite into the program. And then you have about a month to decide um, whether you want to accept that or turn it down. Um, and then we do have a tuition deposit that is due in November as well. So that's what you can expect um, for those items going forward. Yeah, and is there any questions on any of that, um, the timeline or the, the, you know, the grading rubric or, you know, any of the, any of the, the topics in there? I have a pretty long list. Would it be better to email it to you? Um. Depends what kind of questions there are, you know, are they an easy question to answer in an email um, or do you want some more, you know, in depth? A mix, uh, mm -hmm. I guess my one easy one is, uh, are there any opportunities to integrate livestock production practices? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, unfortunately, we don't um, have at the farm. Um, you know, we uh, go to at least one livestock operation, um, but really due to the nature of how things run out at the research farm, we don't have that opportunity, unfortunately. Okay. We do, you know, try and connect if there's, you know, if, if you're um, interested in livestock and learning about more livestock um, opportunities in this area, uh, we do try and connect, you know, those, it's something that we've done in the past. Yeah. Kind of my, my interest there is actually, uh, I guess it would be more along the lines of like a permaculture setup, integrating the two. Um, Cause that's. Yeah. yeah, that's a great um, model of agriculture, you know, having that closed loop system. Um, just for you know where we're located at. It, it, yeah, it's tough to do on ten acres. So. Yeah. Okay. A lot of I will say that a lot of the business and financial aspects that you're learning from Brooke, it does translate over, you know, to running a, a business with livestock. Okay. Um, do most of the students? Are there, are there opportunities to work on local farms in the afternoons outside of class or um, yeah, have a part-time job things, of some sort? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say about um, 
half of the you know people that come to the program usually have um, a, a, a job after the you know at the other part of the day. Um, some of them go to work on farms. Some of them have a completely you know separate job that they go off to. One of the things that we try and do as um, an organization that's that is supporting the farmer network is um, have a listing of job opportunities on farm job opportunities on our website. Um, you know, we don't, you know, coordinate any of that. We try and post jobs when we when we hear of them, when farmers approach us that, that they're looking for labor. Um, we don't coordinate that on behalf of the students, but we do try to make those opportunities um, okay. publicly available. What else you got? Um, I guess probably one more for for now. Uh, do any of the production practices get into uh, the regenerative methods, uh, building soil health, and really focusing on? Uh, I'm not sure the right adjective I want to use there, but uh, regenerative versus conventional. No tell Joe, yeah. crops, that kind of stuff. Yeah, Joe Jonathan can can answer that. The short answer is yes. Uh, we're not really focused on conventional type agriculture. So okay. we'll start with the conventional agriculture as we're learning the base core concepts, um, just because some of the the core concepts are a little bit easier to learn until you and then spread out from from there. But the primary Primary back, back, background or backbone here is is more of the sustainable, regenerative, and organic agricultural practices. So, okay, very cool. Thank you. Yep. Jonathan, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, we try to incorporate as much regenerative practices as we can on the farm, incorporating you know actual like regenerative practices where we don't till and we have like barriers and strips and stuff like that on our scale it is a little difficult but as much as we can we do that especially on our small scale it's very minimal tillage um, really really working at building soil health quickly and then on our larger scale we kind of demonstrate more of that like you know how do you build soil slowly with cover crops um, since you know it's a lot more expensive on a larger scale to spread inches and inches of compost and things like that so we do cover a good amount of those and you know how to incorporate cover crops into you know your system and how to terminate them and how they can work on small scale um and really how they benefit so you know you'll see a couple of our field blocks next year almost in either permanent um, cover crop for the season or in cover crop most of the season and then transition to like late fall production or something like that some of the things that we farmed at Tinsley this year so we kind of let them recover um, and if you can that's really great but um, so we do talk about that because it can be kind of it can be difficult to integrate some of those regenerative practices into like a really small space um, where you really need to grow a lot so okay thank you That's all I've got for today. Thank okay. you. Well, feel free to email if you have other questions, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you for the question. They're good. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, if not, I will um, stop the recording. Um, yes, if you do have a chance, if you are local, Please feel free to join us at the end of August for an open house. Um, please join us for the Beers with Farmers on next um, on August 1st. Um, we'd love to see you and, and talk with you more about the program. Um, yeah, thank you all for joining us today. Hope you have a good one.